What's up guys? So today I'm going to be doing a little bit on the Skyline. So Skyline, for those of you that don't know the car, um, it's a 1996 Nissan Skyline ER33 sedan uh, GTS 25. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful when you say the full title. Um, it's a Spec 2 sedan, so it's like the kind of later model. It's 1996, like I said. The car itself is powered, because it's a GTS 25, it's an RB25 DE engine, so 2.5 litre straight 6, 24 valve, twin cam, um, it's got, well, when it left the factory it had 190 horsepower, so who knows what it's got now, um, it was dynoed a few years ago um, at a local kind of dyno place, and they obviously use calculations to work out the brake horsepower, and they got 180, so how accurate that is, I don't know, but it means that it's still, you know, still got a bit of kick to it. It's plenty of power enough for a small track like Driftland, um, a relatively kind of technical track. However, the differential ratio in the car, the diff's been swapped numerous times. When I got the car, I had a 3.9 ratio diff, um, which is far too long. It's too long geared. Um, with 205, 55, 16 rear tyres, um, which is usually what I run for skidding, uh, the top speed of the car, because it's a five-speed manual, is somewhere around 176 mile an hour range which is it's far too much for a car with 190 horsepower it's far too long and it means that at the track especially driftland i'll only really use second gear to drift unless it's full out or layout or maybe switching to third depending on the size of the rear tires but most of the time if you look at any of my videos or anything like that second gear is usually the gear i'm in and um, which it's kind of the car's kind of underpowered as it is it's quite a i wouldn't say it's a lazy engine but there's not much power or torque until 5000 rpm so you need to keep it singing in order to get the car sideways. So my plan is to change the ratio of the diff. Um, now, it's an R200 diff that's in this car. Choices for R200 diffs, they range anywhere from like, I think they go as low as like 3.6, I think, um, all the way up to 4.9. Now, 4.9 is the highest you can get. It's quite a rare ratio. It only really came in a few Nissan vehicles. I think Nissan Caravan is one of them, I think a C32, I really don't know, I'm kind of guessing. But they did come in Nissan Navaras. Now, they only came in certain Navaras, um, they only came in petrol Navaras. Now, I'm not even sure if they made petrol Navaras for the UK market or the kind of European market. However, they did make them for the US market. They sold them as a Nissan Xterra or a Frontier, depending on kind of what model it is. But basically, the front differential from a Nissan Xterra should theoretically fit. Um, well, the internals, like the crown gear and the pinion gear, should fit in an R200 casing, which means you should theoretically be able to use it in a an R200 differential, which is what comes in the car. So, after a long time trying to get one. Um, I've been trying for, I would say about 9-10 months, trying to get a hold of one of these differentials. Originally I bought just the ring and pinion gears from the States, um, and then I bought diff, like the actual diff itself, and you know, spun numerous stories with items getting lost by couriers, and getting delivered to the wrong address, and then some people just not even bothering to have the item in stock and sell me it, I'm not going to name any names, but people just wasting my time basically, when all I really wanted was this differential. So after, like I said, many months of heartache and you know disappointment, finally got myself a hold of a front differential assembly from a Nissan Xterra from the States. And luckily enough, there's two ratios that come usually, it's a 4.6 and a 4.9. In my theory, the 4.9 would be better geared for Driftland. It would give the car a new top speed of around about 140 mile an hour, which for a non-turbo 190 horsepower engine, that's plenty. I mean. I don't even think I would get to 140 in that car, from being honest. It's not that powerful. So it should make the car a lot more usable. It should kind of, you know, give me a lot more usable rev range on the track, which is kind of what we want. Because a lot of the time, my car will bog down in second, and I could really do a, a wee bit more revs. And if I switch to third, it bogs down as well. So, I mean, I'm kind of fighting a losing battle. I could put smaller tyres on the back, which sometimes I run 195, 45, 16s. And that kind of makes it a bit better. 
but to change the differential ratio would definitely gear the car better for that track. Um, might struggle on maybe larger tracks, but again, even with a 195 45 16 on the back, with a 4.9 ratio, the top speed of the car is 128 mile an hour. That's pretty much perfect. I can't see there being any need to go any faster than that at track. And not to mention, the car's limited to 180 kilometers anyway, so what's the point of having all that, you know, usable rev range when the car won't even go at that speed anyway? So this is the diff. So like I said, this came out of a, I think it was a 2002, or a, it's basically like an early thousands Nissan, like, Nevada, basically, or a Nissan Xterra, or a Frontier, whatever the part of the country you're from. And... You might be looking at it thinking, that's not going to fit in a Skyline, and you're right. <laughs> the casing is obviously made for the truck. This is a front differential, so obviously the drivetrain comes to the front, and this will obviously go to the near side front wheel and the off side front wheel, respectively. However, the only thing we're interested in is the, the pinion gear and the big crown gear inside. The ratio should be 4.9 um, to 1. So that means for every revolution of this, these turn 4.9 times, I think. Yeah. So what that means is your gear multiplication is 4.9. So whatever comes out of the engine, say you're in fourth gear, which is a one one ratio, that means that for every one spin of this, these turn 4.9 times. Basically, that means the gear in, like I said, is going to be a lot better, more suited to the track. But first things first, we need to actually make sure that we've bought the right thing, because for all I know, I could be talking to you about this, and it might not even be the right diff, but... I'm ninety percent confident it is the the right diff. So let's get stripping it down. First things first. I'm not even going to drain the oil. I'm just going to take the back plate off and let it drain out into that drip tray. Uh, so this is literally the first time I've opened this, so I mean, I really don't know what to expect. Already, I can see good things. I can see that on the side of the crown gear here, there it says 49.10. Um, so that's the right ratio anyway. It's a 4.9 diff um, ratio. So you divide 49 by 10, you get 4.9, which is good. So a good start. So the next thing I need to check, make sure it's not reverse cut. Um, so this is a the 4.1 R200 crown gear that I've got already. And... You can see they're both the exact same, so it's not been reverse cut or anything like that, which is good because it's been a front differential. It's kind of possibly could have been reverse cut, but that's good. So, looking at the actual diameter of it, which is the next thing, it certainly looks like a 200 millimeter ring gear. Um, I've actually got two 180 millimeter ring gears from an R180 diff, which came in earlier, kind of Nissan S13s and I think R32 Skylines. First glance, it looks really good. Uh, I've got my hopes up now. I'm almost 95% sure it's going to fit, <laughs> but shouldn't get too excited. So we've got the actual differential assembly loose now, um, you can see it's starting to come out, it just needs a wee bit extra prying. There is shims here and here. Now these shims aren't that important because we're not reusing the, this pumpkin, we're reusing the one that came out my Skyline's original R200 diff. But keeping note of them anyway just to be safe, but I'm pretty sure these aren't reused. Um, the bearings as well, I'm sure we reuse the new stuff. Uh, sorry, we, we reuse the R200 stuff for the Skyline as opposed to this Nevada R200 diff. So. Just be careful anyway, and keep them aside just in case, but yeah, there are shims either side, so you will need to can keep an eye out for that when you're disassembling your original diff. You need to keep these safe and keep them on the right side as well. Don't get them mixed up, because they are different thicknesses. And that's the differential itself removed from the house in. So we look inside here, grab a torch. So you can see the pinion gear in there. Um, that's obviously what gets, you know, it rotates with the drive from the engine and that's what spins this crown gear. So we need this pinion as well because it is the 4.9 ratio. And I'm just hoping that that pinion is the right length because, again, I had an issue with the pinion length last time. Um, 
So yeah, you need to be careful with that. And you can actually see that one of those shims is actually still in the house and it's stuck in. Like I said, we don't need these ones. However, you need to be careful when you're stripping your original diff because you will need to remember where they go. And this one obviously went on the far left. So for instance, you know, you'd be putting that on first, then your smaller shim, then your bearing. So you need to keep them in the right order and don't get them mixed up. For God's sake, whatever you do. <laughs> Um, yeah, you'll really have coming a hard time with the backlash and stuff like that. But so, need to. You could hammer this out, but I'm going to use a press to press it out. Don't have a press here, so I'm going to have to get a shorter one. But shouldn't take long. It's just a case of the nut at the top. Yeah, you can see the nut at the top here. That just gets ugga dugga off, and then press the actual pinion out. I would keep this flange as well. I'm not sure if you need to reuse the flange or you can reuse your old one, but I'll probably just keep it anyway. But like I said, hopefully this is the right length of pinion, if not, yeah, we're kind of up shit creek. <laughs> so the next thing I need to do is take these bolts off, yeah, obviously stage them, and give the ring gear a gentle tap with a like a, a leather hide hammer, and be careful that it don't damage the ring gear. And then we can start building up the pumpkin for the proper R200 diff. Okay, so the new crown gear, or the ring gear, um, the 4.9 ring gear has been bolted to the pumpkin. So all I need to do is torque these uh, once you get access to a torque wrench. These are the bearing caps that we'll be using. As you can see, I marked them left and then upwards, and then that's the shims and the bearing. And that's the same for the right side as well. These are the output flanges. Now, they don't actually fit into the the Xterra, the actual diff assembly itself, the shafts are a bit too long, but that's fine because they fit into this. This is the R200 casing that we'll be using. This is the one that came with the Skyline, basically the same as an S14, a 240SX, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's already got solid bushies as well, so it's ready to go. The only thing I need to get is a stud from a backing plate. Forgot all about that. I could reuse the one that's on the car, but I'll just get a stud for this and make that work. And then it's just a case of pressing the new pinion into the hole there, putting the shafts in, um, obviously put the, the pumpkin in first and put the caps on and then hopefully should have a working differential. This is what came out, so basically 4910, so this is the right ratio, got this mounted up, got it all torqued, got it all loctited and that's good, and this is obviously the right um, you know, ratio for this. Um, but we've run into a first problem. So this is the original 4.1 pinion, and as you can see by comparing these together, the original pinion is absolutely ginormous in <laughs> comparison to the 4.9 pinion. I really have no idea why it's such a difference in size, um, but this, the differences get even weirder. So. The bearing is the biggest problem. So this is the actual roller bearing. You can see obviously the size of the race is massive. And it's for this size of bearing. So, the actual bearing that's on the 4.9 is small, it's really small. And it obviously wouldn't fit in that size of you know race, it's too small. The good news is, I've taken measurements of the actual pinion shaft if you like. Everything's the exact same, including the spline count, the thread, the length is all the same. What I'm thinking I need to do is basically 
just get one of these bearings and press it onto this pinion and that should work. But what's really interesting is this is a, an R180 uh, differential pinion. And you can actually see this, the bearing that's on this is the same as what's on the 4.9. It's quite weird how that works. Um, but that's where the similarities stop because the R180 pinion, the spline count is different or it's too small rather. Um, this is the actual um, output flange for the pinion and you can see it's far too small for this. However, it fits on the 4.9 perfect, um, so it goes on perfect. I'm not sure if this is maybe like a, a slightly stronger diff or a slightly upgraded diff. As far as I'm aware, it's out of Skyline and it was a, it was a five, like, the output flanges are basically five, you know, five by one, as opposed to a lot of them are three by two. So I'm not sure if that's got something to do with it, maybe the bare end's different or something like that, but yeah, it's a, it's a really weird one. Because yeah, obviously this is nice and strong, the gears are huge, but yeah, it's a bit of a kick. Um, again, kind of almost back to square one. I'm hoping that I can maybe take the bearing off this one and press it onto this pinion. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. This is the collar and like pinion spacer that came off of this uh, original diff. So this goes on to the, the 4.9 pinion um, and that spaces it out, well it should space it out as close to where we need it to be. Look, look at all these pinions, so like you've got an R180, an R200 and another R200 but look how different they all are. So like bearings are the same, bearings are different, shafts are the exact same, like they're identical in every way except the bearing and obviously the size of the pinion, this pinion is huge. And then obviously these two, the splines are the exact same, the length of this exact same, the threads are the exact same, everything's the exact same. And then when you compare these two, obviously the bearings are the same, the pinion size, the actual gear itself is the same, but the actual shaft is a lot skinnier. These are also different. And the spline isn't the same, and the thread is probably the same thread, but it's kind of irrelevant when you yeah, the same thread, but it doesn't really matter because the, the actual output flange is totally different, doesn't even fit.